Fuck, fuck, du mit mir da, mein Dings, es kommt hin, Gott. Mehr sah mir, lass die Lied um, lass der Dreck im Basta. Wir zett haben, drabi, du, die Lied, die Red Reda. The fleets of the Northern Raiders have sparked the modern imagination, just as they shocked those who suffered their attacks. But who cut down the trees and built those boats, spun the wool and wove the sails, made the iron and forged the tools? History is so often centered on the exploits of kings and warriors, the drama of conflict and conquest, that it forgets about the farmers, the fishermen, artisans and merchants that make a culture viable. The Dark Ages Recreation Company focuses on everyday life in Northern Europe at the turn of the first millennium. Individuals portray a group of working artisans who illustrate the everyday use of personal possessions and the skills used in making these items. Walking through a typical camp presentation mounted by Dark recalls a seasonal market akin to those held at Reeb in Denmark or York in England. But this is just the tip of a research iceberg. Dark is made up of people with substantial experience in costumed recreation of early medieval history. It gathered originally to provide interpretive presentations in Lanzo Meadows, Newfoundland, as part of the thousand-year anniversary of the arrival of the Norse in Canada in 2000. Since then, the company has continued to be deeply involved with both the Parks Canada site and the Norstead Viking Village there. As this is the only documented Norse occupation site in North America, this work has given Dark a unique perspective on Vinland. In addition to repeated trips to Newfoundland, Dark has provided living history demonstrations in conjunction with exhibits at museums throughout Ontario and into the United States. This has included presentations in support of both Vikings' North Atlantic Saga and Full Circle, First Contact. As with any association, the strength of Dark lies in the accumulated experiences of its members. The group includes trained archaeologists, engineers, a chemist and geochemist, a research librarian, and several teachers. On the artistic side, there's a professional blacksmith, potter, wood turner, costumer, and a number of textile workers, all with decades of experience in their respective fields. Several have worked directly in the museum field as program designers, consultants, and staff trainers. All continue personal research into the history and practical technologies of the Viking Age. A number have become academically recognized specialists in their subject areas. The members of DARK use a distinctive, shifting point of view presentation style. This is a demanding method where the voice may range from modern explanations to speaking as an individual from the past. To do this, members have developed detailed characters. Each person plays what is essentially themselves as they might have been a thousand years ago. The person spinning really is experienced with textiles. The scald really built that lyre and composed those tunes. The group has accumulated many shared experiences, so tell the same stories of events, or at least their version of them. When taken all together, this weaves a texture of authenticity into any presentation. Dark concentrates on high-quality presentations for museums and aims to set a standard for living history displays centered on the Viking Age within Canada. The basic outdoor module is a camp, consisting of tents, wooden beds, sea chests, cooking fire, each artisan's equipment, and all their associated personal belongings. This provides an anchor from which to demonstrate activities. From the beginning, Dark strove to create accurately detailed replicas of individual objects, assemble collections of working tools, and put these collections into use. Museum artifacts come alive when replicas are used to test their function, utility, and the skills or time required for a task. Unlike many other reenactor groups, Dark has deliberately chosen not to undertake combat performances. Certainly these are public favorites, but they can create a false image of Norse culture. Special care is taken to represent historical facts as best supported by current research. This often means including elements that, to modern eyes, may be problematic, but they are presented in a way that hopefully invites thoughtful commentary. Over the years, Dark members have moved into increasingly sophisticated research. Members now commonly process the raw materials that allow them to make the tool, to make the tool, to make the thing. The answer to, how did they actually do this, has often proven to be, no one is quite sure. The desire to acquire some of the original skills and to apply these to object creation has therefore led to solid experimental archaeology. Some Dark members have become notable figures within the growing experimental archaeology community in North America. A few have driven larger research projects that are now decades-long investigations with significant discoveries. 
Although not the only undertakings, the two most highly publicized areas of experimental research have been in bloomery iron smelting and glass bead making. Since 2002, members of DARK have worked on over 30 individual experiments in bloomery iron smelting, including public demonstrations at Lanson Meadows for Parks Canada, the National Blacksmiths Conference, the International Congress on Medieval Studies, and REARC. Over the years, making metal from dirt has evolved from an unknown into a dependable working system. Now the team is working backwards towards possible Viking Age methods based on known archaeology. This has included the development of a dependable artificial bog iron or analogue, a method now used by many other experimenters, and continuing experiments in bellows design. There have been several extended experimental series into specific furnace types, based on the excavations at Howells in Iceland and those at Lanser Meadows, Newfoundland. Other practical work with metals has included pewter casting in soapstone moulds and experiments with bronze using lost wax processes in clay. More recently, these have been complemented by tests of enamelling following the instructions of Theophilus. Experimental exploration of glass bead making is another long-term thread within Dark's activities. Dark has explored matching the shapes and designs for furnaces to the archaeological evidence at Reba, along with the lurking dynamics of such furnaces. Bead furnaces have featured prominently in museum work and at conferences as demonstrations as well as experiential activities. Making and testing various clay mixtures used for construction has been a popular experimental and experiential add-on at museums and schools. Cooking has always been a core activity at Dark's demonstrations. The cooks use ingredients that would have been geographically and seasonably available. It is fascinating to take evidence of seed, pollen, and bone finds from the archaeological sites, combine them with the artifacts, and try to make a tasty meal. The methods used in cooking greatly change the results, so members have made and tested a variety of artifacts, including pit-fired ceramics, soapstone bowls, pots of copper alloys and wrought iron, skillets, and other implements. At any presentation, a good portion of our company will be involved in textile production, from cleaning and carding wool, to spinning and dyeing, then finally to weaving and various kinds of needlework. The public often asks, how long did it take to make that? And the answer depends, in part, on ongoing efforts to find the most efficient way to warp a loom, the best way to hang loom weights, or how climatic factors such as humidity, temperature, and light might affect the weaving of different fibers. Other research and experimentation has examined the production of rope and fishing gear from nets to lines. As non-fishers living far from the ocean, this has proven to be a rich way to remind similarly landlocked members of the public that the community we portray is one with strong connections to the sea. For the last 10 years, wood turning on a spring pole lathe has been an ongoing activity at many dark demonstrations. As well as allowing the discussion of simple machinery with the public, it has permitted the investigation of different equipment configurations and construction details. Experiments have examined the durability of drive cords, spring poles, and tools of different materials, together with the distribution and form of turning debris. As part of its 2017 demonstration, Dark was requested to create a spring pole lathe and tools for the Lanson Meadow National Historic Site, and to oversee the training of the museum staff. Dark children have literally grown up doing museum demonstrations. Entertaining them, and letting them entertain, makes for a lively camp and helps engage young visitors. The board game Nafeltafel has been a part of every demonstration Dark has done. Play is a way to test rule variations, contributing to the research that has been the subject of several academic papers. Over the past 20 years, the Dark Ages Recreation Company has developed a well-earned reputation in Canada for mounting high-quality living history presentations. Beyond the group's skill as demonstrators and interpreters, individual members are making significant contributions within the field of experimental archaeology. Dark remains committed to sharing our experiences and illustrating daily life during the Viking Age through lectures, demonstrations, and presentations. We are most interested in working with museums, academics, and fellow dedicated independent researchers. For more information or to contact Dark, see our website at www.darkcompany.ca. Yeah.